So these are the components. This is gonna get super juicy, and I've gotta tell you, um, this is only like half of it. We've got tons of Hydrovex custom cooling gear from Corsair that I couldn't fit on the table, or at least you wouldn't be able to see it because there's so many boxes already. This, again, is going to be the most powerful build I've ever put together, and that's thanks in large part to the 3900X. First off, it's 12 cores, 24 threads, and a consumer-grade chip. That's awesome. And then also the Ventus RTX 2080 Ti. The reason why I went with the Ventus from MSI is because it uses the reference PCB, the same one you'll find in the Founders Edition, the FE 2080 Ti, so that'll work just fine with our reference 2080 Ti Founders block from Corsair. Now, to keep the 3900X in check, we've got the the MPG X570 Gaming Edge Wi-Fi from MSI. This is a pretty beast X570 board. Not the best that MSI makes, but it's one of the best. I'd regard this as one of the better uh, X570 boards on the market. MSI makes great stuff, and that's why I had no problem using them for this rig, specifically for that motherboard. We've got some Corsair Vengeance RGB Pro modules here. This is a 32 gig kit, so you're getting four 8 gig modules. We're going to fill up all four slots. That should look nice and juicy. Then we've got an MP510, and you're probably wondering why I didn't go the Gen 4 drive. Eh, I have a Gen 4 drive, but it's in another system, and I don't want to. I don't want to completely wipe all the data off of that for this build. So uh, yeah, we're gonna go with this one. The one terabyte M.2 NVMe drive. You can see reads and writes are pretty high, at least 3,000 megabytes per second, up to 3,500 megabytes per second for sequential reads. So that's pretty awesome for this drive. And uh, look, I mean, I'm not doing a ton of stuff that requires reads and writes much faster than that. So we could have gone with a faster Gen 4 drive, but yeah. This was still, I'm not going to complain, right? And then we have the RM1000X. This is a pretty beefy power supply. Actually, it's a really beefy power supply from Corsair. You can see fully modular. We've got a pro PSU cable slit, uh, cable sleeved kit from Corsair. And I uh, chose white and black because our case is going to be white. Some components will have white LEDs on them. At least that's how I'm going to set it up. And so I want some contrast there because there are plenty of black components as well. And then we have uh, the tons of custom cooling gear in the Hydrovex series uh, uh, family from Corsair. So I did throw the 360 mil rad up here. This is a copper rad. Let's see, looking mighty fun if I do so, so myself. Can't wait to pull all this out and check it out. But what we're going to do first is build the just the, the hardware based system, right? So we're going to have the radiators and the, the fittings and all that stuff to deal with later. But right now, I want to get all of the hardware in the case so I can start planning our runs. So let's do that right now. Oh, and by the way, I'm going to try to do this all in one video because why not? We'll just, let's just crank it all out in one big video. Hopefully you guys like this and share it with your friends. That would be appreciated. I'm sure MSI and Corsair would appreciate that as well. All right, here we go. Thank you. 
So this was fun. Didn't take as long as I thought it would. It's been a while since I've been in the custom loop games, so I was kind of concerned about, you know, two bending things like that. Uh, but it's kind of like riding a bike, you get used to it, and as long as you're not like radically changing the type of tubing you're using, acrylic to PETG in terms of how it bends is not very different, but you have to cut it differently. So I would say acrylic is actually a bit more difficult to, to deal with in the long run, um, and that's that's why I've used PETG for the most part. But uh, no harm, no foul here, just different sets of tools to cut this stuff. Yeah, the one thing I do want to do is add a capture card here. We're going to have Corsair Elgato send a, a, a 4K Pro. So uh, that'll be nice and I think they actually have a new one coming out soon So maybe we'll get that one. That'll fill out the dead space below the graphics card If if that doesn't work out, I might just throw a second 20 DTI in here I do have a second hydrax block like I was telling you so That would be pretty easy and a very simple addition because all you need to do is just add two little stents of piping uh, to uh, kind of run those two cards in parallel so that would be just a, another alternative doesn't really matter. At this point, this is the most powerful system I've ever built. Uh, most powerful CPU-GPU combo, I should be uh, more specific about that. But um, this is gonna, <laughs> this is like more power than I really need. And it's more power than you probably need. But uh, it's nice to have the power, you know? Not gonna, not gonna complain. So to end this one, I'd like to thank Corsair and MSI for sending all the components for this build. Literally everything in here, except for the CPU for obvious reasons, is a Corsair or MSI component. MSI sent the 20 DTI Ventus, which used the reference 20 DTI block. It's actually a really beefy air cooled car. If you guys wanna check that out, just link down below, along with all the other components in here. So the whole Hydrax kit, I'll try to list every single component I used, as well as the case, 220T. If you're down for doing some weird stuff to pull off a custom loop in here, be my guest. It was certain fun and challenging at the same time and uh, temps are great if you're wondering about temps you can see fluid really doesn't touch 50 C it's just below that uh, and this was after 30 minutes of, of letting the, the fluid uh, kind of saturate with the temps I, I'm thinking that it's gonna be just above 50 after about an hour of use uh, but as long as you have adequate fan curves to dissipate that heat you should hit an equilibrium at around 50 C with this config by the way neither uh, the CPU or the GPU is overclocked I just left it at stock and that's kind of how I like it. I like I just peace of mind. It just it's a quiet system and Ryzen's already gonna do its thing with PB2, just kind of boosting cores as you need. The 20 DTI is already fast enough for anything I do. I, I don't even game in 4K, so it's kind of an overkill graphics card for that. But uh, yeah, I guess it's just the selling points, like hey, click the video because it's an expensive card. I don't know. This is the first 20 DTI I've ever owned, so I, I don't I don't really know what to do with it yet. If you guys have some cool ideas, we'll experiment with it. Maybe try disabling some cores in the Ryzen CPU. Maybe, just some options. We can do like a one Ryzen core gaming rig and see what happens like we've done in the past. There's a lot of stuff we can do with this system. Just because it's a custom loop now doesn't mean that we can't play around with it. So leave suggestions down below. I appreciate you guys watching this one and I will catch you in the next one. This is Science Studio. Thanks for building with us.